Mark chapter 16 says, in verse 15, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. How are you all creatures doing out here tonight? Almost sounds like every critter, amen. To every creature. So tonight, that's what we're doing. We're preaching the gospel to every creature, everyone created into the image of God. And I had a beautiful dream the other night, one of the most powerful dreams I've had in a, in a long time. But I dreamt I was walking on the beach, and I dreamt that I looked up at the starry sky. It was at night, and I looked at the starry sky. And then the brilliance was like a galaxy. You know these pictures you see online on TV of the galaxies? It was purple and blue and sparkling stars throughout all of it. And I took my cell phone and I took a picture of it in my dream. Because it was just beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. And when I looked at the picture, instead of the stars, I still saw the stars, but I saw the faces of the people. I saw Asians, Blacks, Whites, you know, all kind of nations in the world, Hispanics. I saw them instead of the stars, but I saw the stars too. And that was the dream. And that's what we're doing. I, I, I believe there's more to this dream, but I believe it speaks of the nations of the world. The nations of the world. And that those are the people that Jesus loves. And we must do everything we can. To win the lost to Jesus Christ. Yeah. And the Bible continues and says, He who believes and is baptized. First thing I want you to notice there, is it doesn't say, He who is baptized and then believes. Right. Look at the order. It says, He who believes and is baptized. And with all due respect to those who perhaps were sprinkled as babies, as a child, there's several problems with that. But I'll first give you the good news. I see it as a blessing. We don't use water in our church. We lay hands like Jesus laid hands on the children. He said, suffer the children, come to me. And he laid hands on them. And uh, that's what we do when we do baby dedication. However, that sprinkling that you might have had as a baby is not a baptism. It may be a blessing. Maybe your parents decide they're going to dedicate you to the Lord. But when you later on, become saved he who believes and then is baptized you should be baptized after you are saved after you believe in jesus you should be baptized amen and uh, the other thing is the word baptism in the greek is the word baptizo and you know what it means to dip under to dunk if you may, to immerse holy with liquid. Now, the problem with the Greek Orthodox Church, you know, there's a church called the Greek Orthodox Church. The problem with them is they know Greek. And so, so they know that the word baptizo means immerse. So what they're going to do with those poor little babies? Guess what? They immerse them. They dip them right under the water. Yeah, you can go check it out. I know what I'm talking about. I saw it in a movie. <laughs> and, but for real, now, I've seen in a movie, what was that movie's name, but I forget. But anyhow, they take the poor baby and they dunk him right out of the water. But you can look on YouTube, they'll see they, the Greek Orthodox Church baptism, they baptize the babies right under the water, because they know Greek, they know the word baptizo means immerse under the water. And, um, but the problem is, it says, he who believes and is baptized. You first must be baptized. First must believe and then be baptized. And I actually think we never had a place where we could baptize people. We went to churches, other churches. We went to the ocean and whatever. But we are here in a place where it doesn't matter if you get wet. You know, We, we couldn't just take a baptismal pool out there at the cheer center where we used to be. But I, I'm sure if we can find a horse trowel or something, put it out to you one day. We can have a great baptism right here. And won't that be great? Yeah. Amen. The most of you are probably already baptized. But, uh, but, but it says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. 
will be condemned. My friends, the greatest joy you can have ever have is to know that you're saved. That's the greatest joy right there. If you don't have money in your bank account, but you know that you're saved, you have the greatest joy right there. There's a song that says, I'm saved and I know that I am. You know, that is the greatest joy. You might know that your body may be sick. You may have pain in your body. But if you know that you're saved, that is the greatest joy. And you can go on and on. But let me tell you, as great as the greatest joy is, so is the greatest sorrow. Where there's a weeping and gnashing of teeth. It says, he who does not believe. And that adds baptism. If you don't believe, you don't get baptized. But, it, but the focus is on believe. He who does not believe is condemned. The greatest joy is when you go to heaven, stand before the judgment seat of Christ, the great white throne judgment, and God looks at you and he says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Can you imagine the joy? But imagine the Con the, the terrible gnashing of teeth and the sorrow and the guilt when he says depart from me for I never knew you depart from me for I never knew you oh we got to be saved we got to be saved and then the Bible says now we just say that those who believe and are baptized so when it says those who believe Keep that in mind in the next verse. Verse 18, 17 says, And these signs will follow who? Those who believe. So some people say or think that the next following signs that we're going to see, like healing the sick and casting out devils, whatever, these signs are for preachers. Preachers who believe. But look at the previous verse. The previous verse talks about Everyday folks. Everybody say everyday folks. Everyday say folks. Federalsburg folks. Federals say Bethany Beach folks. Bethany Beach say folks. Salisbury folks. Salisbury say Frankfurt folks. Frankfurt folks. Amen. Say Pokemon folks. Pokemon folks. And say, say Georgetown Heidi. <laughs> Amen, folks. Regular folks. Regular folks. These signs will follow not necessarily preachers. But if the preachers believe, these signs will follow them. But it's not necessarily preachers. These signs will follow them that believe. If you are believed and you are baptized, you will be saved. And you will go to heaven. But between now and heaven, you have a journey to, to walk. And, and we, we just sang that song about, I dare to believe. But it says over there, wait, let, me, let me read it to you. How powerful that is. Let me read that, 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 that one line for you. Listen how powerful that is. It says there, it says there, no matter what the doubters tell you, no matter what the devil says, no matter what anybody, anybody else does, you keep on trusting Jesus. Yes. You see, it won't be long. God is right and the doubters are wrong. Hallelujah. You just dare to believe. You just keep on believing. Don't give up on your faith. Hallelujah. Keep daring to believe the Lord. Don't let the devil steal your faith. Keep believing the Lord. Amen. The devil may steal this and the devil may steal that and the devil may steal the other thing. But don't let the devil steal your faith. Don't let the devil steal your hope. Don't let the devil steal your ability to believe. Because if he's stolen your health, and he's stolen your money, and he's stolen your family, and he's stolen what, still everything what you can think of, but he hasn't stolen your faith, he can steal your faith. Faith is not something that gets just stolen. Faith is something you just give away. Amen. Faith doesn't get stolen. Don't tell me the devil stole my faith. Don't tell me that. You gave your faith away. You gave your hope away. The devil can steal your faith. 
That's something you give up. Let me tell you, my friends, how many times have I been knocked silly? Have you been knocked silly with life? I mean, we've all been knocked silly. But you know what? If you've been knocked silly, but you dare to continue to believe, amen, you have not given up on your faith. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, Ephesians chapter 6 talks about this, this, the, the weapons of our warfare. It says the weapons of our warfare, you know, are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And it says to, to do the following. It says, take up the whole armor of God, that having done all, you must stand. Somebody say stand. stand. So after all is said and done, all God wants you to do is keep on standing. Keep on standing. And then it says, take up, um, let's just go through them real quick, the helmet of salvation. Yes. And then it says, the sword of the Spirit. What is that? The Amen. The palabra de Dios. Put some Spanish in here, put some spice in my message here tonight. Palabra de Dios. The, the the, the, the Word of God. The Word of God. There's some Afrikaans in here too. The Word of God. Amen. The Word of God. How do you say it in Italian? The Word of God. Parola de Dio. Parola de Dio. Parola de Dio. Something like that. Amen. Sounds like going on parole. Amen. But it's like palabra de Dios. Praise God. Praise God, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. Amen. The breastplate of righteousness will make you look good. Amen. You may, you make us, may look as skinny as a rake. Amen. But you put that breastplate of righteousness on. Man, you got pecs. You, you, got, you got abs like, like you can't believe. You got... You got, you got, what do you call these muscles again? Pecs. These are the pecs. Oh, no, uh, amen. Biceps. 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 Biceps and triceps. Amen. Man, you look ripped when you put the shield of the, uh, the bracelet of righteousness on. And then it says the shield of faith. Praise God, the shield of faith. The shield of faith. And I like to see my shield of faith not as only one. It's all around me. It's under my feet. It's above my head. It's all around me. I live in a bubble, but the bubble's made of diamond, as hard as a diamond. The devil can pierce it. Amen. The shield of faith. The sword, the, 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 the belt of truth. Amen. The, the girdle of truth, the Bible says. And shoes on your feet for the preparation of the gospel of peace. Man, when you're all dressed up like that, you like a, look like a little league hockey kid. Amen. You, you look dangerous. But you know when you read all of that in Ephesians 6, 6, you know what it says after that? It says, and having done all to stand. Because let me tell you, you'll go out with that battle. The Bible says the children of Israel, they left Egypt uh, armed to the teeth. It doesn't say to the teeth in the Bible, but armed. They, were, they went out there armed for battle. Man, they were ready to fight until they started losing their faith in God in the wilderness. Things that they, they started doubting God. But you know what? You are God. You are. You got the weapons of the warfare on you tonight, and I'm telling you, let's use it because because there's no use to dress up like that and and not use it. And then when you use it, the devil's going to give you a fight. Yeah. He knows he can't win unless you let him. He knows he's, on a, he's going to lose because the Bible says, Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Somebody say always. Always. Your victory is always. Always, always causes you to triumph. So always. the devil knows you're going to win. Yeah. But he puts up a big show. Amen. He makes you feel like you're losing and makes him look like he's winning. The devil's a good deceiver. He's really good at that. Give him some credit. Amen. He's a, he's a deceiver and he's good at giving the impression that he's winning and you're losing. While you're winning and he's losing, he makes you think that he's winning and you're losing. 
Do you have the same devil that I have? Amen. Come on, somebody. Does the devil lie to you the way he lies to me? But I've got news for you. Do you have the same God that I have? And his name is Jesus. His name is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And how many of you have that God in your life? And let me tell you, if you've got that God in your life, you cannot lose. Exactly. So keep that weapons on. Yes. And the devil may hit you. He might hit your helmet of salvation. It's all laying sideways. <laughs> Amen. And you might have like three arrows here in your, your shield of faith. Your poor belt, look, it's going to break. It's going to cut in there. You've got to keep your pants up while you're fighting. <laughs> Amen. And, you're, and you've got your, your, your boots. They're not as shiny as they used to be. You know? They're not as shiny as they used to be. They've got all kinds of pins in them now. And, uh, and, 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 and your poor breastplate of righteousness. Yeah, it's still all ripped and everything. Man, it's all skewed. Your poor, your poor sword of the spirit looks like a piece of spaghetti by now. I mean, you've been, you've been fighting with that sword of the spirit. It's got chips in it. And the devil's thinking, man, what an ex excuse for a warrior. But you know what? He, he gave you his best shot. And you almost went down. And actually one time he did go down. But guess what? He got back up. And the devil's like, oh no. And he gives you that best shot again. Then you go down again. And he turns his back and all the demons are cheering. But then when the dead dust settles, up from the grave you arise. Hallelujah. And there you stand again. Having done all to stand, don't let your faith, don't let the devil steal your faith, but don't give your faith away. Dare to believe. And it says here, it says here, it says, and these signs will follow them that believe. The first thing it says, in my name they will cast out devils. In my name they will cast out devils. Let me tell you, I'm not devil conscious, I'm Jesus conscious. But since I'm Jesus conscious, demons tremble wherever you and I go. Don't, don't you know, so, so many times when we start thinking about demons and ghosts and things, you know, you, you get, you get scared or something. I'm not a scared guy. Amen. The other day I was flipping through the TV and you know those paranormal shows, like guy, ghost hunters or something like that. Have you ever seen those? They're looking at ghosts. I never watched the thing. And, and I turn it on. And these guys, let me tell you, it's just total stupidness. There, there's nothing to it. There's, there's no ghost, nothing to it. And some of them are staged, you know, and some of them are just nonsense. But when they had the camera going down on the staircase, and you saw that movement walking by it, I, I found myself... I know this is just a show, but I've got goosebumps looking at that ghost walking down there. There in front of the camera. It's just human nature. And I just, I, I thought, I knew this. It's, it's all stupid. It's, it's, there's no such things as ghosts. There's demons. There's no such things as ghosts. People die. They don't walk around, hang in the basement. It's all your imagination. But let me tell you what's not your imagination. It's Diablo. Who knows who Diablo is? That's Spanish for devil. Amen. The devil is real. But here's the thing. Don't be afraid of the devil. The devil is afraid of you. And the same thing. The devil makes it, gives you the impression that he, that, that he's not the afraid one. You're the afraid one. But don't let the devil lie to you. The devil is afraid of you. You stand in faith in the name of Jesus. And the devil can make up a big show. Make it look like he's so great. He's nothing. He's under your feet. How many of you take your Bibles raised up in the air? I'm going to do Joel Osteen real quick. I'll try and get my Texas accent out. This is my Bible. No, that's, that's, that's us as county. I don't know. So this is my Bible. Say it. 
This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what I say. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. Okay? Now put it down again. That's Joel Osteen's version. I'm going to add to that. Raise the Bible again. Raise your iPhone again. <laughs> this is my Bible. God is what it says He is. God can do what He says He can do. And He's on my side. I'll put it down again. Now here is another part I want to add to it. Raise that Bible. Actually, don't raise a point that way. To where the Diablo resides. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. Devil, Devil. You, are you are what it says you are. You are what you says you are. You are where it says you are. You are where it says you are. And you're under my feet. You're under my feet. You are defeated. You are defeated. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Do you see where I'm hitting with that? Don't let the devil get the best of you. Dare to believe God. The devil is under your feet in the name of Jesus. Amen. Not cast out devils before. But let me tell you what. We should not only look at casting out devils out of people and whatever. In fact, I've seen some people where I thought it's better if I just cast the people out of that devil. <laughs> but, okay, this is a funny joke. But let me tell you something. The demons of life. The demons of life. The demons of life when he comes to discourage you on Monday morning. When he depresses you on Tuesday night. When he, when he comes and he, he makes you worry about life on Wednesday night, midnight. And when he takes your sleep away and those kind of things. That's the demons I'm talking about also tonight. Let me tell you, no demon is going to take away my sleep in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that God gives His beloved sleep. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Some people are so proud that they only sleep four hours a night. Well, go ahead and knock your socks off. But I'm sleeping at least seven or eight. Come on, somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to enjoy my sleep. I'm not talking about sleeping all day long. But I want my seven to eight hours beauty sleep. You don't think I look this naturally, do you? I'm just going to beauty sleep. Come on, somebody. You should try it. Uh, you said amen, amen like Reinhard Bonnke. Does. Hallelujah. Right before that. Amen. It it, that's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. amen. That's, that's right. That's, that's right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Cast the demons out of your life. Cast the demons out of your finances. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you missed a good place to say amen. Amen. Cast the devil out of your finances. Cast the devil out of your family. No, don't go to your family and say, I cast the devil out of you. But stand before God and say, God, the devil's not going to have my child. The devil's not going to have my, my parents, my grandchildren, whatever, in Jesus' name. That's not all the Bible says. It says there, these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out devils, and then it says, they will, sp they will speak with new tongues. They will speak with new tongues. It's not me that says so, it's Jesus who said so. Jesus is the first one who brought up the issue of tongues. Except in the Old Testament, there's a prophecy that I will speak to them in, in tongues. The Bible speaks of that prophecy. Okay? But, but Jesus was the first one that said, you will speak in new tongues. Peter didn't make this up. Acts chapter 2 is when it happened. But in Mark chapter 16, Jesus already said, you will speak in tongues. How many of you speak in tongues? Praise God. How many of you want to speak in tongues? Want to still receive it? Keep, keep believing God for that miracle. Do you not speak in tongues? No, oh, you do, but you just want to do it. Yeah. Okay, I got you now. Okay. I, I, I didn't understand. Okay, I, understand. I know what you mean. Okay. So, so believe God for the speaking out of the tongues. This is, a, this is what distinguishes Pentecostals. And I praise God for the Baptists that speak in tongues. Do you know there are Baptists who speak in tongues? There are Baptists who speak in tongues. I call them Baptocostals. Amen. There are Methodists that speak in tongues. Did you know that? Praise God. A Methodocostal, you're right. Amen. One day I was praying with a Presbyterian. Now let me just make a confession. 
I always thought the Presbyterians, they will never speak in tongues. Presbyterians. You know, there's actually a joke. A Presbyterian told me this joke one day. You know the Bible it says that there'll be a half an hour silence in heaven? Have you ever read that in Revelation? There'll be a half an hour silence. My Presbyterian brother told me, that's when the Presbyterians start come marching into heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. But let me tell you something else. One day I was praying with this Presbyterian pastor out there in Lewis, Delaware. And man, you know what I heard? Out of his mouth, he was speaking in other tongues. I'm a praise God, man. You are Presbyterian tongue talkers. Praise the Lord. How many of you know the difference between Pentecostals and Charismatics? It's basically the same thing. The Pentecostals are those who have traditionally been Pentecostal circles like Assemblies of God, Church of God, United Pentecostal Church, so forth. But the Charismatics are those who did not join the Assembly of God or whatever else. They remained in their churches. They remained in their Lutheran churches. But they received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And they started speaking in other tongues and remained in their churches. Lutheran Pentecostals are called Lutheran Charismatics. You've got the Catholic Charismatic. I know we talk. But, but there are Catholics that were speaking in tongues. They called them Catholic Charismatics. I always say Mary was the first one. <laughs> but Catholic Charismatics and so forth. And I'm going to go there. There's a whole other can of worms. But let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, whether you're a Pentecostal or a Charismatic, open your mouth and start speaking in those other tongues as the Spirit gives you utterance. Praise God. Praise God. Dare to believe God for it. Don't stop. If you really want it, don't stop. Believe God day in and day out for the speaking in other tongues. And you know what? It will become so part of you. I remember it doesn't happen to me much. But I remember one day, I woke up at night and I realized I had already been speaking in tongues for a while, while I was sleeping. You know why? Your body's sleeping, but your spirit's still alive, awake. Amen. Praise God. And then it says, another sign. They will take up serpents. Take up serpents. Now what does that mean? I'll first tell you what it does not mean. It doesn't mean that you go play with snakes. Amen? I know many of you are tempted to do that. I mean, you're not tempted to do that. But there are churches that actually do that. Did you know that? Out there in West Virginia. I have not seen one. I want to go, to one. I want to go there once and just see it. I wanted to go this couple of weeks ago with Heidi, but she wouldn't. <laughs> but, but you know, out there in West Virginia, in Kentucky, I understand, uh, there's snake handling churches. And you actually see it on YouTube. But they're good people. I'm not making fun of them, but they're good people. Uh, love them. I, well, I've never met any one of them, but I, they are good people. They've saved, they believe in Jesus Christ for salvation. All the speaking tongues even. But they also handle snakes. They believe that this verse teaches that you're supposed to handle snakes. And, and they actually start having a praise service. And we all, all get to heaven. And then, and then when the Spirit starts moving, man, they're having a wonderful time in Jesus. And then somebody, when it's the right time, somebody comes in there with a box. Amen. And you better be in the Spirit when that box comes out. And they bring the box and bring it right there to the front. And then the old man comes and he opens the box. And whoever feels led can come and handle themselves a snake. Amen. And then the man comes in. A pastor friend of mine saw this. He says he was in one of those services. And he says he saw this man and he was in the spirit and he grabbed that snake by the head and the tail. And he was holding it like this. And he was about to pass it to another brother. He caught it. And when they were, they were hollering and dancing and shouting in the altars. I'm all for that, but I'm not sure about that snake. And then they, they wanted to pass it to my friend, the pastor. He's like, no, no, I'm not from this church, brother. <laughs> Amen. So, so if you bring out a snake, uh, well, I got a confession to make. I knew I was going to preach this tonight. So I brought you a surprise. I brought myself a box. 
Anybody who's got enough faith can put your hand in this box. <laughs> Don't worry, there's nothing in here. Eh? <laughs> if somebody brings out a snake, I'm going through the back door. Amen. There is a door back there. If there wasn't, I'll just ask, where do you want the back door? Because I'll make your back door. I look like Tom and Jerry. Have you seen those where they go through a wall and Jerry is like, you see the little profile going through the wall? <laughs> that's, that's what it all looks like when you bring a snake out here. I'm your pastor, but there's a snake out here. You're all by yourself. Amen. Okay. But let me tell you what it does mean. What does it mean? I want you to go with me to the book of Acts chapter 25. Uh, Acts chapter 25. Acts chapter 25. And then I'm going to start wrapping it up. And I want to pray for you tonight. I know many of you need prayer tonight. Um, it's actually to Acts chapter 28. There's 1 through 5. It says, Now when they had escaped, Acts chapter 28. Now when they had escaped from the shipwreck, of course, they found out that the island was called Malta, and the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on a fire, and guess what happened? A viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said one to another, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. But he, Paul, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up and suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw that no harm came to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. <coughs> now, he wasn't a god. He was just a believer. He believed in Jesus. And these signs followed him that believed. And he took up a serpent, not like in a snake handling service. When the serpent struck him, he believed that he'd be okay. And he lived. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And I think there's one more sign left in the book of Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And we read in verse 18. Oh, two more si signs. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt, hurt them. That doesn't mean you bring out poison and start drinking it. I don't know if there's any poison drinking so, uh, churches. Amen? You never know. But the last one here, and they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They will lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I'm going to believe God with you tonight that when I lay my hands on you, whatever it may be, you will recover. If you can... This is how it works here in our YouTube services. I'm recording on me, but this isn't. This will play next Sunday night during this time. Last Sunday night service is actually playing right now as we speak, and uh, last Sunday morning service played this Sunday morning. So what I preach this morning will preach next Sunday night. I mean morning. You got me. So if you can, please listen to, to this morning service next Sunday morning. It will play at 8.30. It will play at 8.30. Have you ever read in your Bibles where it says, here in the book of Mark chapter 16, that in the earliest manuscripts, these verses do not exist there? Have you seen that footnote in some of your Bibles? Let me tell you, this morning I prove to you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that it is in your original Bible. Mark really wrote those, letter, those words. And it's too long and lengthy for me. To, it'll take me like 40 minutes to explain it to you. But you go watch the YouTube video. Amen? You go watch the YouTube video. Next Sunday morning. But tonight I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel His holy 
presence here tonight. And I believe in God that He's going to heal you tonight. In Jesus' name. And you know, the Bible says, I remember Ed Raybert, pastor of a Hatfield Baptist Church in South Africa, which was one of those charismatic Baptist churches. They became an independent church, and they called themselves Hatfield Christian Church. But Ed Raybert, gone to be with the Lord already back then, he said, the Bible says, they will lay hands on the sick, and what will happen? They shall recover. But it doesn't say how long it will take. But they shall recover. Now, I know there's much more to it. I like to see the miracles instantly. I, I like to see the miracles instantly. Praise God. This morning I told the story when we were in Pakistan. And it was a Muslim country and they shut down all meetings throughout the whole country because of political, political reasons. You couldn't gather for nothing. But my crusade director, who was the overseer, he's now, he's now the overseer of the Church of God in, South Africa, in uh, Pakistan. Back then he was the secretary general or something. But he knew people and he got special permission that we could have services. And we had a huge tent. Could see over 10,000 people. Huge, huge tent. I've got pictures of like joelishcock.com, click on crusade, you'll see the tent. And see the people there. You want to see the people, you'll see there's thousands of people on that tent. joelishcock.com, click on international crusades. And in that meeting, well, firstly, the bomb squad had to come and sweep the whole place for bombs before the service. Then you had to go through a metal detector. And they checked you. Everybody who came in was checked with a metal detector. And we were trusting God, but the government would not allow us to continue a meeting unless we had our own uh, security. So the whole time I'm preaching, I got two guys on the platform with their rifles like this. Man, you'd think I'm some president out there, <laughs> some, some guerrilla warfare leader. But these two guys with their rifles. The whole time I'm preaching, you fall asleep, they take you out. No, they never do that. But, but they need they, they to protect you, to protect us. And I preach that night the best I knew how. When I preach in Muslim countries, I'm not preaching like against Muhammad, against the Quran. No, I'm actually preaching for something. I'm preaching for Jesus and for the Bible. And um, that's how we keep the doors open. Amen. And, uh, and that night, I said, tonight I want to pray. And guess what? I know you got back pain. But the first person who had came up for prayer had back pain. And he stood on the platform. And I prayed for him. And I prayed for him hard. And then I told him to move his back. I said, move your back like that. Ooh, that actually feels good to me too. I've been standing a long time. I realize how long this preaching has been going on. So he moved his back. And guess what? All the pain was gone. Now there's two reasons why I told him to move his back. Number one, I want to activate his faith. Make, him to, to make a demand on God for his healing. But secondly, to see how he's healed. Well, that was just the beginning. Then the deaf ear started opening. And there's one lady, she was carried up onto the platform. She could not walk. They, she could sit. They put her on the platform and she sat there like, like this. And I prayed for her. I raised her up. And I'm not no superman or nothing. I'm just a child of God and a servant of the Most High who believes. And these signs will follow them that believe. I raised her up and I prayed for her. And then I told the pastor or somebody next to me, I said, hold her, let's walk her. She could barely walk, but she started moving those legs. And then two pastors took her. And suddenly, I was still here, she had a seizure. And I don't think it was just a natural seizure. I think it was a spirit that came out of her. And then she got up again. And she's walking with no problem. People weren't holding her up walking up and down with no problem. She was crippled. 
God did the miracle. I like the instant miracles. I also believe that God also heals gradually. But whatever it is, we lay our hands on the sick and what will happen? They shall recover. Father God, we thank you tonight for, for the word that was preached tonight. Lord, I preach with all my heart and all my passion like I was preaching to 10,000 people in India or Pakistan. But Lord, tonight I pray that you will confirm your word with signs following. Tonight I'm believing God. I'm believing God for a miracle. I'm believing God for miracles in this place. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you, Lord. I pray for miracles. Right now, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is already prevalent in the atmosphere. Oh, I feel his anointing. I feel his glory.